I know some of you are preparing for your English exams or have tons of essays to write and you're probably stressing out about how to improve your writing skills in a short amount of time. As a person who used to get tons of C's, I truly understand the frustrations. That being the case, today I want to share with you five practical writing methods that help me to score at least A- for all my writing exams, assignments, and essay consistently for the past two years. Having a hook sentence at the beginning of your writing is definitely a nice touch, but it is not essential. Having a thoughtful, well-constructed thesis for your writing is far more important. Just tell your audience what to expect for the next few paragraphs. If you want, you can also provide a mini outline for your essays. So basically tell your audience what would be your specific steps of supporting your thesis. But if you have limited time and words, especially doing your English exams, I would just focus on having a nice, well-constructed thesis rather than a nice hook sentence. Because at the end of the day, having a clear, constructing explanation of your idea is the most essential components in writing, especially in academia. You gotta be more specific than you need to. Let's say you want to talk about international student and their learning experience in Canada. My recommendations would be focusing one single social group. If you want to just focus on Chinese international student, just stick to that. For the locations, you can focus on one province specifically. For example, I'm living in Alberta, so my focus could be Chinese international student in Alberta. In terms of the periods, you can say during COVID-19 pandemic or in the early 2000s, 2010s, or 2020. Having a well-constructed and specific topics or not is actually the separations between B+, A-, and A. Always provide further explanations and examples for your ideas or arguments, especially if you're trying to explain something that is extremely abstract. Before we talk about what makes social responsibility important in our society, we need to first elaborate on the concept of social responsibility. What is the definition of social responsibility? And after that, you can provide two to three examples. It is a great way to ensure your audience to follow your train of thought and showcase your understanding of the topic. If you're not sure how to use those advanced vocabulary or sentence structures, just don't use them. I know it is vital to showcase your range of vocabulary and your understanding of those complex grammar in order to get a good grade in an exam, but it doesn't mean we need to throw in every single fancy words we know into our writings. If you're not sure the differences between method and methodology, just don't use those two words interchangeably into your sentences. Have I ever used that word or sentence structures and got it right before? If the answer is no, then don't use it. Don't try to change the world yet. The reason why I put it last is because I know it is the hardest pill to swallow, especially if you're creative and constantly want to bring up something new to the academia. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely a great quality to have and you shouldn't change it at all. However, I want you to know that it's a double-edged sword to bring something completely new for the first time in your exams or in your paper because you don't have enough time to do any in-depth research on a topic which makes it more likely for your audience to find flaws in your statement. In fact, you might always miss something or couldn't explain things well enough due to the lack of reference from the past research or findings. If you have a really cool idea that you want to talk about in your final term paper or during your final exam, please talk to your professors or your teachers beforehand. Tell them about your idea and how you want to deliver it. Make sure everything is on the right track then you can start writing. Yeah, so that's it for today's video and thank you so much for watching. And I really hope those tips could help you to become a better writer. And if you have any more questions, you can also comment down below and I will try my best to answer all of them as usual. Good luck with your exams and have fun with your paper. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.